Hello, fellow Sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. Once again, we're continuing our video series on the authority of Scripture, looking at the process by which we reconstruct the original manuscripts and why we should have the utmost confidence in it. Take it away, me. <laughs> The Bible is inerrant, but that doesn't mean we don't make errors in our interpretation. Inerrancy also doesn't mean that our Bible is free from errors. Wait, what? <laughs> our Bible has errors? How can it be inerrant if it has errors? All right, let, let's rewind back to our definition of inerrancy. <laughs> The inerrancy of scripture means that scripture in the original manuscript does not affirm anything that is contrary to fact. Ah, sneaky. Original manuscript. Well, we don't have the original manuscript of any book in our Bible. In fact, we don't have the original manuscript of any literature from antiquity. It was written on really flimsy stuff that did not hold up well. So what we have is copies of copies of copies of copies. Scribes would copy these manuscripts and sometimes the scribes would make mistakes. It's estimated that the New Testament has 200,000 errors. Well, not really. Most of it is grammatical, so it's a different spelling of word, like uh, color versus color, or different punctuation, like a period versus an exclamation point. And how they count errors is misleading. So just as a purely hypothetical example, let's take this verse of Proverbs. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. Now let's say that the earliest manuscripts we found had colored spelled C-O-L-O-R-E-D in this verse. Then some scribe comes along and while he's copying this verse, he changes it to, I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. That manuscript then gets copied and copied and copied and copied thousands of times. That one change to that one letter in that one word in that one verse would be counted as thousands of errors. Pretty misleading. Most of the errors are like that. In the New Testament, there's only about 50 scribal errors that actually impact the meaning of the text, and absolutely none of them have anything to do with any of the tenets of Christianity. It would be things like this. First Kings says, And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. But Second Chronicles says, Now Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen. So that seems to be a scribal error. Pretty easy error to make, actually. But which is it? Did Solomon have 40,000 stalls of horses or 4,000? Does it matter? The point is the dude had a lot of horses. The error does not change the meaning of the text. Even so, though, some of you might be thinking, how can we claim inerrancy of the original manuscripts when we don't have the original manuscripts? How can we be certain that our manuscripts even match up with the originals? So let's talk about reconstruction of the manuscripts. All literature from antiquity is reconstructed by comparing various copies. It's like a little puzzle. When you are trying to accurately reconstruct the original document, you want two things. Early manuscripts. Earlier manuscripts means fewer scribal errors, less likelihood of embellishment or legend creeping into the text. The second thing you want is lots of manuscripts. More manuscripts means more comparisons of manuscripts and therefore greater ability to reconstruct the original text. So, how does the New Testament stack up? Well, today, there are nearly 5,700 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. There are more than 19,000 manuscripts in other languages, Syriac, Coptic, Latin, Arabic, nearly 25,000 manuscripts in total. How does that compare to other texts from antiquity? Well, it dwarfs it. The New Testament has more manuscripts than anything. Homer's The Iliad has about 2,000. So you look at all these and you can compare and contrast and you can see changes over time. Scribal changes, changes for clarity. Sometimes the manuscripts had footnotes and those footnotes got brought up to the main text. Oops. So we have a ton of these manuscripts, which makes it really easy to reconstruct what the original said. Here's a good hypothetical. Four different manuscripts with four different errors. Well, by comparing the various manuscripts, is it really difficult to figure out what the original text said? You did it, Sherlock! So that's one criteria. We have a lot of manuscripts, but are they early? 
Well, the earliest undisputed manuscript is a segment of John, John 18, 31 through 33 and 37 through 38. It's called the John Rylands Fragment and it's dated between 117 to 138 AD. Other disputed fragments are dated between 50 to 70 AD, which include parts of Mark, Acts, Romans, 1 Timothy, 2 Peter, and James. Even if the fragment of John is the earliest dated manuscript we have, that is still far better than any other text in the ancient world. Homer's Iliad is the next best, and that has a gap of 500 years. The New Testament gap is about 25 years, maybe less. Most ancient texts are about a thousand years apart from the original. Complete New Testament books survive from around 200 AD. The entire New Testament survives from around 250 AD. That's pretty darn early. What's more, the early church fathers, Christian leaders in the second and third century, like Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, etc., they quoted the New Testament in their writings so much that all but 11 verses of the New Testament can be reconstructed just from their quotations, with some notable exceptions that we're going to look at when we talk about the Bracketed Bible. Very educational. Next week, we finish off a series by addressing the canonization of Scripture, so be sure to tune into that. Again, as a reminder, there are only two more ATCs left on the TCC social media channels. If you want to keep watching these videos, you need to subscribe to the Appropriating the Culture YouTube channel, join my author's Facebook page, or follow Appropriating the Culture on Instagram. I will follow you back. If you listen in podcast form, subscribe to Appropriating the Culture on your favorite podcast app. And if you watch on local Locals, everything remains the same. And you're going to want to follow ATC because we have some exciting announcements coming up and some fresh content too. But until then, I'll see you next week for more Appropriating the Culture. <laughs>